There are some other people that we must thank. The advertising agency, Howard Merrill and Partners, Pizza Hut, York Companies, Southern National Bank, and the staff of Kerry Wholesale. Mr. and Mrs. Robert Jackson are joining us today. They lost a son in Vietnam, and they were the constant source of support during our fundraising efforts and supported us spiritually as well. Alice Watkins, the executive director of Raleigh's Downtown Business Association, the University of North Carolina Center for Public Television and members of the media are here today. This ceremony is being carried live via our statewide network. Most importantly today, there are a number of Vietnam veterans organizations from Greenville, Raleigh, Durham, Roxborough, Greensboro, Winston-Salem, and Newburn. They were our early supporters. The National AMVETS in their Raleigh chapter also gave their support. We should not forget that other countries pledged their allegiance to the Republic of South Vietnam, and three of those countries are represented here today. We would like to rec rep recognize Commodore and Mrs. K.A. Doolin from Australia. Air Commodore G.C. Hubbard from New Zealand. And Colonel Kalub from the Philippines. They have traveled a long way to meet with us today. When this project was first conceived, the Memorial Committee felt strongly that the memorial design should not actually make a statement as to the rights and wrongs of the Vietnam War. And we did desire a more traditional sculpture to be placed on this site that would remind those of Vietnam in other ways. The committee viewed the design submitted by our finalists in a competition in 19, November of 1984. It was at that time we selected the design submitted by Abby Godwin of Greensboro, North Carolina. And in a few minutes, we will see how Abby almost reached into the souls of the Vietnam veterans that she talked to and read about and used her God-given talents to sculpt clay to create this memorial that will forever grace the grounds of this square. Abby, from all of us, we say thank you very much. And I would ask for you to stand in the audience and join me in our appreciation to Abby Godwin. Abby's work did not actually finish with the completion of her life-size clay model. The next step in the process was the casting of the memorial itself. Today, we have Joel and Renee Meisner of Meisner Fine Art Foundry in Long Island, New York, joining us. And after the memorial is unveiled, you will see that company's demand for quality work and their attention to detail. And I would like to say that that is the same foundry that cast the three fighting men statue that we see adorn the grounds of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Washington. Spencer Industries of Philadelphia cast the bronze plaques. You can't see them right now, but you will in a few minutes. And Jorna Memorials of Wilson, North Carolina, furnished the plaque. The Land Design Company of Raleigh headed by Stan Williams, spent long hours here with landscaping crews in the early morning hours and on into the evening working by light here in the evening. Stan Williams, the president of that company, and Jeannie Austin, all so here with us today, and 
Let's give them a big round of applause because they have worked very hard on this project. On a more personal note, there are three special people in my life that I would like to thank for being patient with me over the last five years as I have taken time to work on the project, as other committee members have. And that's my wife, Sandra, and our daughter, Stephanie, and Avra. Thank you, girls. In 1984, General William Westmoreland visited Raleigh on behalf of the Memorial Committee. The Honorable James G. Martin attended that gathering and read a letter to all assembled there. Here are parts of that letter. Those who left their homes and families in North Carolina to defend freedom and serve their nation were in the best tradition of dedicated Americans. Their efforts reflected concerns for the future of our nation and all Americans take pride in the Vietnam veterans of North Carolina. Sincerely, Ronald Reagan. Governor Martin has long been interested in this project and in Vietnam veterans. He left his office a number of times this week to come out on the site to check progress and talk with veterans and the workers that were here on the site. And I would like for you to join me in extending a warm welcome to the governor of the state of North Carolina, James G. Martin. Thank you, Steve. To you and John Saputo and all of those who have had a part in this, thank you so very much. Honored veterans of Vietnam War, your comrades present in spirit, fellow North Carolinians, with an almost irresistible force, we yearn, we would wish today to be able to begin this dedication as one would begin a book with that disclaimer. All of the events and characters herein portrayed are fictitious. But the war in Vietnam was real, horribly real. It cannot be wished away with wishful disclaimers or tears of regret. The long days of remembrance remain with us, not as a dream, but as a reality to haunt us forever. The Vietnam War was a tragic war, especially in that those people for whose freedom you fought were thereafter not sustained with the weapons needed to defend themselves, and so were lost. That's the part that some would like to forget even today. But tragedy unremembered must rank with profound sin. The chronicle of the Vietnam War is written with a bold flourish across the pages of American history, not to revive or relive the shock and the tears but so that we remember. And so it is that in this dedication ceremony, we seek to honor those men and women who served in the